One of the biggest hurdles I see for those getting into 3D printing is with proper bed adhesion and proper bed leveling. Now to me, those two things go hand in hand with each other and they are both equally important for the success of your 3D printed part. Now back when I originally got into 3D printing six years ago, proper bed adhesion and bed leveling was a huge pain for me and I often would run into issues where my part would shift mid print or the part would stick just way too hard. And on one occasion, very early on, I actually cracked my glass bed by trying to remove a printed part that basically had welded with my glass surface. Back then there was not nearly as much good info. There really were no standards and a lot of 3D printers did not come with heated beds. Now, over the past six years, I have tried a ton of different build surfaces, almost everything under the sun, from glass with just about every adhesive you could think of, capped on, PEI, standard build tech, blue painter's tape, um, packing tape, Gerolite, and just even a few other random ones that are needed for very specific types of materials. In all reality, one of the biggest developments that made bed adhesion a hell of a lot easier, a lot better to me, is the addition of a heated bed. Like I said, originally this wasn't a standard, and although technically you don't need a heated bed to print with PLA, it is a hell of a lot easier, and I would never choose to print with a non-heated bed unless I had no other option to. Now, today I do still bounce around a little bit for some of the advanced materials that just require a very specific build surface. For about 95% of my printing, I have been using PEI. PEI is absolutely amazing. It does require a heated bed, but luckily that is basically a standard at this point. But with PEI, your standard materials like PLA, ABS, and PTG stick incredibly well when the bed is heated up. And as the bed cools down, the, you can actually hear the parts in a lot of instances releasing from the bed. And a lot of times you can just t like tap the part off, but um, the removal of the parts is so much easier than a lot of the other materials that I've used before. Now over the past year and a half, I have been printing a ton with Wham Bam's flex plate system using their PEX adhesive sheet on top of their spring steel. Uh, Wham Bam states that PEX is essentially a modified version of PEI that has a higher melting temperature than PEI, but in my experience it acts very similar to PEI in that for PLA, ABS, and PTG, again, it sticks really well when it's heated, and when it cools down, the parts pop right off. And a combination of this build surface with occasional rub down of alcohol if I get some oil on it, or uh, an occasional light scuffing with some sandpaper to just add a little bit of additional grit has proven to be incredibly successful for most all of my day-to-day -day printing. Wham Bam did also release another flex plate, which is their powder-coated PEI build surface. And I've been doing quite a bit of printing with this, so in today's video, we're gonna take a look at this build surface. We're gonna compare it to the PEX that I've been having a ton of success with over the past year and a half, and I will let you know what my overall opinion is, which one I maybe think is better. And again, with how important of a topic proper bed adhesion is, I am really excited to show you guys what has been working really well for me for just about all of my 3D printing. Again, all of my PLA, ABS, and PTG, this is kind of what I have grown to depend on. So without further ado, let's get right into today's video. For those of you that are new to 3D printing or maybe haven't used a flex plate system, I wanted to do a quick crash course on what a flex plate system is typically made of. Now, normally there are three parts. You've got your magnetic base, which is going to be permanently adhered to your 3D printer's bed. You've got your spring steel, which is the part that's actually magnetic and will stick down to that base that you've now adhered to your bed. And then you've got a third layer, which is your actual print layer. And that normally consists of an adhesive sheet. And in this case, I've been using again, PEX, which is the actual layer that you'll be printing on. Initially, when I saw flex plate systems, I was not completely sold. I had been 3D printing for quite a long time at the time that flex plate systems even first came out. And I was sort of stuck in my old ways using at the time, I believe glass and hairspray or glass and glue stick, depending on what I was printing with. But once I got my hands on my first flex plate system, I was blown away and was pretty bummed out that I had waited so long to give it a try. There are quite a few benefits of using a flex plate system. For starters, you don't have to use the spatula anymore to remove your parts from the build surface. Not only have I personally hurt myself by using a spatula on a part that's been stuck, I have seen accidents happen. So that is something that you eliminate as well as just the frustration of a part that's stuck way too hard. You also don't have to worry about damaging your build surface. I've seen plenty of times where a part's really stuck, someone takes a spatula and they actually tear through their build surface. So it eliminates that. You also don't run the risk of damaging your part. 
all of this falls into the same situation of a part stuck too hard, but I've seen plenty of times where there's a part that's stuck, someone takes a spatula and has to use quite a bit of force, and in the process, either the part flies off and breaks, or just from the force of the spatula, it can damage your part. So all of those things are eliminated. Also, when you are removing the bed and flexing it to remove your part, you're not putting any pressure on your 3D printer's bed. And by not putting that pressure on the bed from, again, normally the removal process, you're not compressing your bed springs. And what that means is your bed is going to stay level for a lot longer than if you are manually removing your printed parts. So again, that's another huge incentive. And finally, you can have multiple bed surfaces. So again, like, for PEX, if I'm printing with PEX and I'm printing my normal materials like PLA, ABS, and PTG, that's awesome. But let's say I want to print with nylon. Well, I can actually have a separate flex plate system or a separate uh, sheet that's got Gerlite on it and swap out for that to print with nylon filament. So it's really awesome also for being able to very quickly hot drop in different build surfaces for various materials that you might be printing with. Now that we've talked about flex plate systems and their benefits, let's take a quick look at the PEX bed or the PEX sheet that I've been using. The PEX sheet does have a very smooth glass-like surface and it will leave a mirror-like finish on the bottom of your parts, very similar to what printing directly on glass will do. This material does last for a really long time and I've had this sheet probably for about six months. The only thing I've ever had to do to it is apply a little bit of IPA when I had a lot of residue that kind of had built up on it over time, as well as on one occasion I did uh, add a little bit of scuff with, I believe, 400 grit sandpaper, which is actually what the manufacturer recommends, just to give the sheet a little bit of an extra bite onto your parts. Now, taking a look over at the powder-coated sheet, you can very easily see that the surface is much rougher. With this sheet, it's actually both the spring steel as well as the adhesive portion all in one, so you don't actually have three parts to your flex plate system. You just have the magnetic base and then this powder-coated PEI spring steel, which is an all-in-one. Having had such good experience with my PEX sheet, I was really excited to try out this powder-coated bed. I know there are a ton of people that swear by using powder-coated PEI beds, but before this, I really have very minimal experience using them myself. So I went ahead and took this bed, swapped out the PEX sheet on my AM8 for the powder coated sheet. I ran a quick bed leveling sequence and started up just a small print. I quickly saw that I needed to lower the nozzle and I'd seen this before, but with the powder coated sheets, you want your nozzle pretty close so that way it pushes the material into the bed and you are getting a good contact between the material and that build surface. One really nice thing about the texture on this build plate is that you've got more surface area, so it really does help to hold on to your printed parts. Now that I had everything ready to go, I hopped over to Thingiverse and I found a really cool model that was like a uh, sliding organizer for micro SD cards. I've got a bunch of micro SD cards all over the place. They're always there when I don't need them, but whenever I need one, I can't find them. So I figured that a little organization tray would be a really cool thing to print. And also it was really narrow and the way it was designed was to be printed standing upright. And so normally if I were just printing this and looking at it, I'd probably print it with a brim to give it some extra adhesion. But I figured I would test out the build surface and just print it standing up with no brim and just see what happens. And I was really impressed to see that not only did the part complete, it had no uh, wiggling and it was very, very secure all the way through. So that was really exciting. I did try to print the uh, insert for the micro SD card standing up as well. And that made it probably 30 layers in before it fell over. It is a incredibly narrow, narrow print, even more narrow than the actual outside holder for it. So I wasn't expecting it to complete, but I again was just trying to stress test this just to see how strong the adhesion would be. I did go ahead and print out a few more things for desk organization. Uh, my desk is not in the frame and that is by design because my desk is a complete mess. And I also have a bunch of full size SD cards that I don't know where they are ever. So I found a really cool twist. It's kind of like a twist uh, container that's got slots for, I believe it was eight different full size SD cards. So I went ahead and printed the body and the lid side by side on the build surface, which turned out great. It stuck really well. And once I removed it, I flipped over the parts so that way you can really see the impression that the bed leaves on your printed parts. Now, if there is one thing that I think some people will like about the PEX over the powder coated PEI, it is that build surface texture. I know a lot of people really like printing on glass because it does give you that soft mirror finish and printing on the PEX also gives you a very similar result. Now, personally, to me, this texture looks awesome. And most of the parts that I'm printing are functional or if there's something that is 
um, you know, a display model, typically that is gonna be on the bottom, so it's not something that's very visible, but because of how uniform it is, since the nozzle is pushing that filament into the build surface, in most cases, it looks like it's there by design. While when I'm printing on a smooth surface, I feel like I have much more uh, room for deviation where you can see that maybe some of the lines are a little bit uh, wider or some of the lines are a little bit further away. So personally, I really like it. I'm sure there'll be certain instances where I may want to swap to the PEX as well, just because if I'm going for a very smooth mirror finish, but for most instances, I really like the textured surface and it almost gives your part a little bit of grip to it. Now, unless I am testing out a machine, I rarely print the full surface of a 3D printer either batch printing or really large parts. Typically, I feel like when something is going wrong, it is when I'm pushing a 3D printer to its limits. So unless I'm doing it for the sake of science or showing you guys something, I don't often do it. However, I did wanna see what this build surface would do if I printed a really large part. And on the AM8, I've had pretty good luck with the bed leveling on it using the BL Touch. So I went ahead and downloaded a 20 by 20 uh, by 20 millimeter calibration cube that I went ahead and scaled up to just about the full build size of the um, AM8 and then I hollowed it out, I printed it in shell mode. So it basically did three layers back and forth and then just ran a single parameter around the entire uh, square. And I was incredibly impressed as this thing was printing, I kept looking to see if the corners were gonna start curling because again, normally when I do large prints, even with PLA off to one corner, there's at least a little bit of warping or curling going on, but there was absolutely zero. And I actually made a mistake when I was slicing this or with my printer and I don't have the center point set up correctly. So the back corner of the square was just coming off of the build plate a little bit, which I thought might cause issues, but there were no issues whatsoever. And roughly 10 hours later, I had this massive wavy box that I didn't actually think was gonna complete because of how thin the walls were, but it was sitting there looking great. And again, like I mentioned with PEI in general, as the bed cooled down, I could hear the block releasing. Like you could actually hear it separating from the build surface and to remove it, I did move the build plate just for the sake of it, but I could have very easily just grabbed the cube and picked it up. Now, I don't expect you to be able to see this here, which is why I did get a close up, but just looking at this, the texture from the far corners is completely uniform across the entire thing. And this is what I'm saying when it comes to using that textured surface. Yes, there is a texture to this base, but it is such a uniform texture that like I mentioned a moment ago, it looks like it's modeled in there, that it's there on purpose. So. If I had printed this square on a glass build surface, I can guarantee you that in most instances, the base would not look as uh, clean as what this looks like coming off of this powder coated base. One other really awesome thing about the powder coated PEI beds over going with PEX or any other kind of build surface is that if you print on one side and let's say for some, and this stuff is really rugged because it's powder coated, but let's just say you do something crazy and destroy it. I don't really know what you would do like, drag a nozzle through it for 30 minutes while you're gone or something like that. Well, if you do destroy one side, you can flip it over and you have got a brand new build surface. So it's basically a two in one. So not only does it work really well, not only is it really uh, rugged and, and like a rigid plate, but you've got two in one as well. So it's a really awesome build surface. And it's definitely something that um, I've got another one down here that I'm gonna be installing on my uh, Ender 3 pretty soon here. So this is definitely something that is going to be primarily taking over my day-to-day -day printing. I will still again be using that PEX surface for the occasional smooth print, but the, the powder coated PEI, I definitely can understand what all the hype is about now because it's, it's awesome. I really wanted to run a poll before making this video, but I did not get a chance to. So let me know in the comments down below whether you are team textured or whether you are team smooth. I am curious to see what you prefer, or as a third option, you just don't care. And as long as your parts are sticking down, you are happy. That is, I think, a very fair answer. Um, if you have been using the powder coated PEI, please let me know what your thoughts are and what your experience has been like. If you do wanna find out more about the powder coated PEI or the PEX, I will place links down below in description to where you can find out more or purchase one for yourself. And if you have any questions on anything I don't cover or did not cover, I always try to be as thorough as I can, but there is only so many things that I could think of including in the video. So if there's something I missed or you're curious about something, also let me know in the comments down below. And I've been doing my absolute best to respond to almost all comments like the day after a video is released. So uh, again, leave those down below. 
On that note, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more great videos. I make a video every single Saturday, so there is always fresh content coming your way. If you do want to support the channel more, I will place links down below to my Patreon where there is some really awesome rewards. Huge thank you to all of my current Patreon supporters. Over the last 60 days, we have gotten quite a few new Patreon supporters, and I really appreciate it because it does help me. Uh, it does allow me to spend more time doing what I love, which is making content for you all to enjoy. So on that note, this has been Daniel from ModBot. I hope to see you guys in my next video, and I'm out. Peace, guys.